Desire is a very, very powerful thing. And one, one thing I'd like to say to all of you, in fact, is that you, if you find you can live a life where you're always in your desire, you'll find your life change so rapidly that you'll have, you'll have trouble keeping up with it. And it will change for the better in every case. If you, if you do this, just let yourself follow your passions and desires. Right? Now, most people don't, and most of the denials that come up, so there's other emotions that often interfere with desire, and they're also in the soul. The emotions that in interfere with desire are usually all fear-based emotions. Right? So if I just simplify that for you, let's say I'm over here on the roof, and over there I see somebody, a girl, like I'm a guy, see a girl that I really like and I'd like to get to know, you know? This is me with Mary. <laughs> what happens is I take some steps towards her, and what happens? Yeah. Start, some, some things start creeping in, don't they? Mm -hmm. Now, what, any of my fears, look, it might be the first thing might creep in, might be the fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So once the fear of rejection kicks in, what is my desire now? Run. My desire is actually, yeah, is actually, uh, uh, it might freeze me, or it might actually, no, no, I can't do that, you know, and I go somewhere else. Might, might not. So, what interferes with pure desire is emotional injuries within me that are all based around my fears. This is why a fear list is so important, because a fear list helps you identify all the areas where you're not allowing your desire. You follow me? So, your desire. Here it is, is pure. The key now is keeping it pure by allowing yourself to address all of your fears that present that desire from being realised. Does that make sense? So, so when I'm walking towards this woman, I'm actually every t close step closer I'm getting, I'm confronting another fear. Right? And I need to feel my fears and I need to allow myself to experience them. When I first saw Mary, I was so afraid that I couldn't actually speak to her or look into her eyes. So she was wanting to talk to me. <laughs> and I always was looking away. Like, and she thought, what's wrong with this guy? Like, There's something major wrong with this guy. Like, I don't know why my parents like him so much. He's always not looking at me. <laughs> and the reason why is I, I was afraid of looking at her eyes because I felt if I looked at her eyes, she'd know straight away what I was feeling for her. And I was, I was ashamed of letting her know what I was feeling for her. And so I wouldn't look at her. So what was kicking in there? Another fear that I had to work my way through. My desire at that point was not pure anymore. It was modified by my emotional fears that had entered my soul. So I've found in, my, in, in, in a lot of cases, I've, like even doing groups like this, I've had lots of fears about, about that, obviously. And I've had to work through lots of issues about saying I'm Jesus to somebody. Right? They were, so I have a desire, passions, and then some fears that kick in every time. And I have to confront those. Right? So what we need to do is, is learn to live in this place and learn to actually feel and release all of these. Yeah. And if you can do that at the same time, you'll find that your life becomes very joyous. What a lot of people do though, is they forget all about the desires and just concentrate on dealing with all their fears. And you can get in a really dark place quite quickly doing that. So this doesn't have to be a, a joyless experience, you know. It can be a very joyful experience growing, as long as you remain connected to your desires. What if your fears have blocked off all your desires for so long that you then don't of course even know? You're... And then you do go into this place where you, it almost feels like you can't move or can't do anything, you're overwhelmed and, and yeah. nothing seems to be able to trigger any sort of... My, Mary feels that way right at the moment, actually. You know, my Mary feels that she doesn't know what she desires. And a lot of people have got to that point. And you know, one of the main reasons why is because in the past when we had a desire, it was never fulfilled. Mm -hmm. right? So what happens when desires are never fulfilled? We become feeling a, a feeling of hopelessness. Mm -hmm. right? And that often shuts us down quite a lot too. In those cases, you will need to firstly feel those feelings before you will experience your desires. But if you do notice your desires right now, then start connecting to them straight away. But if you're not even noticing your desires yet, then start addressing your fears. Because your fears are covering over your desires. Yeah. 
and that's a really important thing to be in mind of. 